Do we ever have a lot to talk about today? Oh, tell me. I'll tell, can I? I'll let you start. Okay. So it's funny because I felt like last week's podcast was unfinished. Like we had, I had this whole big list of things that I wanted to get through and notes that I was talking to because our topic, and it's so funny, it just popped up on my computer like 10 minutes before we came on was like, you know how Kevin makes like the theme, the title for it. And it was like, take out the good and put in, no, take out the bad and put in the good. I wanted to keep going with that. So I want to get to some of that because I had a lot of really interesting feedback based on that concept. Take out the bad stuff, put in the good stuff. But and go ahead. No, you go. There's another theme that we could use as a title when it isn't when they when it isn't what they thought it was. I think we use that. Have we already sure used we that? We've definitely that. talked about that. But that theme circles back to not only the patient, but to you as a practitioner. Oh yeah. More oh, often yeah. than not. And the more you drop your ego, the more the answers come flying at you when you don't get high, you and you tell us this all the time. Don't get attached to your hypothesis. And the more you just approach it with what is the word I'm looking for? Intellectual a growth curiosity. mindset. I'll say that with my athletes, right? We talk about a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. FSM has taught me in order to be successful, I must 100% have a growth mindset. Intellectual curiosity. Very good. It just, it, and it's observation. Yes. It isn't good. It isn't bad. It's that. Okay. Hmm. And do you know what the, you know what the word that I'd like to use today a little bit, our, our theme word is you can... vulnerability. Ooh. As a practitioner and for your patient, because I have seen so much, so many outcomes really evolve and change for the better when my patient was able to be a little more vulnerable with the history, a little more vulnerable with their feelings, with their movement. Me as a practitioner, again, being a little bit vulnerable, saying, I don't know what is going on, but I'm going to phone three of my favorite colleagues and we will figure this out. And the patient is comf more com people, not just patients, but people are more comfortable being vulnerable when you're open, yeah. non-judgmental. Yeah. And I'm not saying... I wouldn't say vulnerable yourself, but authentic. Yes. Authentic. Just be yourself. Yes. So a patient came in with this one this week. Just she came in last Friday and she came from Florida. And her presenting diagnosis was EMF sensitivity. All, everything, her body pain, her brain stuff, all of her thing was EMF sensitivity. And then she started talking about her symptoms and she had cervical trauma fibro, duh. And her accidents included one where she fell and hit her chin full force on a step or the concrete or something. And then she started talking about her symptoms and Resky BIVS 18, I use the short one because 18 out of 18 is the highest one I've ever scored was 55. Her score was 71. And it's, but I can feel cell phones. Okay. And she's cervical trauma fibros. So she came in at a seven, left at a two, three, and then came in at a six and left at a two. And then came in at a five and left at a two. And then now it, we know it works. And she said, I know you have a frequency for EMF. Would you just run it on me? So I ran the EMF frequency with her midbrain. And then she said, I just can't be around cell phones. So I took my cell phone, made sure it was off of airplane mode. So it was cell phoning. And I put it two inches from her arm. I says, that hurt? No. Okay. 
and then yeah so well, vulnerability she allowed herself to be vulnerable enough because i said i'm willing to believe you can have more than one thing you can be emf sensitive and you can have this other thing that neither your husband who's a wonderful marcus Welby kind of gp or her son god help us who's an ent understand and so we i sent them last night i sent her husband john rusky's slide presentation from 2022 and that made me read all the way through john rusky's slide presentation and it's like so she could be that way because as a as an fsm community we're not judgmental we just observe and then go ahead and say what you're going to say because i interrupted no and that's how you and i communicate we just go down the crazy roll yeah. we go down going back to what you say to patients who do come in very vulnerable when they have seen a hundred other practitioners and have been in chronic pain for 20 years and they come to you with the desperation and the hope all intertwined and they are they present as vulnerable so when you say nothing you have scares me right away that again it's giving them the good before you take out the bad. It's supporting their feelings, supporting their state, supporting their being before you start unraveling it. And not all of us have the same wonderful bedside manner. We all take a different approach when it comes to treatment, which leads me to my first set of frequencies for the day that I tried was I had somebody that was so sad, a new patient was the saddest patient I have ever treated. Yeah. And I had a very emotional week myself. So we were probably not the greatest pair together. <laughs> or maybe it was perfect. Or maybe it was. Exactly. And I'll get to something in a second. But all I could see was Roger Billica standing in front of me when I was seeing this patient. I'm like, okay, I have to support the good before I can take out the bad. So I ran restore joy first. And I have never done that in my life. Me either. I am telling and you, the nerve pain went down. The numbness went down. Everything that she was experiencing started to, to decrease. And she read the resonance effect, listens to the podcast. And she's let me guess you're running like 40 and 10 or 81 and 10. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to tell you right now. I'm going to keep a list of what I'm running and we'll talk about it later. And it, yeah, it was the first time I've ever run it first because it's typically something that we end with. And my approach is to run 40 and 89. Yeah. It, but the, that the fact that it worked is wow. That's cool. Yeah. I don't know. And again, going back with the whole like vulnerability and how to give them the good before we take out the bad, because Roger talks about both cases when you can take out the bad and then do the good. And then in certain, and this isn't with FSM, he's talking a lot with supplements and detoxing with certain things that some but people are explains why. Yeah. Yeah. Why is you do it that way? Speaking of which, since I've we're just going to pause. I just got, Roger was out hunting, which is why I haven't heard from him. He said, yes. And I, my reply was, would you mind doing an hour at the advanced and an hour at the symposium? And it's 15 years of using FSM, my experience. And the other one was about pearls. So I'm probably going to have, going to have him for an hour at the advanced in an hour at the symposium. And then I'll save the rest of the symposium lineup for at the end. Because I got confirmations from a lot of really cool people. I'm so excited. Okay, let's just go with that. I can't oh, wait. Okay. Okay. Rob DiMartino yes. got back to me. Yes. And he's going to do, I gave him a title. I'm not sure he's going to use it, but it's a functional medicine roadmap. Where do you start? Oh, 
it, in order to get where you want, where do you start and how do you get to where you want to go? How do you decide where you want to go and where do you, and how you get there? And Rob is so good at explaining that. So he's doing functional medicine. Jen Sosnowski is doing functional medicine and she's doing Lyme and mold. Neil Nathan is doing his thing at the symposium. I think I put him on Sunday. Mary Ellen Chalmers is doing the first, she's got 90 minutes. So everybody buckle up on FSM, not just in dentistry, but she has a master's now in head, neck and face pain from UCLA or USC. One of those, the girl's an overachiever woman. Anyway, Jerry Pollock said yes. And he always does 90 minutes. And he gave me a really cool title, which I wrote down, but I couldn't get windows to open. And that's another story. But what I asked him was, and that's a great title. And can you use it to explain how it is you can put the frequencies for the concussion protocol on somebody's abdomen and it affects their brain? Right. We don't run current through the brain, but the frequencies follow that laminar flow of the fourth phase of water that's formed in the blood vessels. Yeah. So Jerry Pollack, Jim Oshman is coming. Wow. He's on Sunday. Jay Shaw prefers Saturdays. And for and I never tell the Ruth Johnston Award winner who it is. It's always a surprise. Do we want it to be a surprise? I'm going to tell we do. Kevin says we do. We it's can have Jay a Shaw. <laughs> yeah. It's Jay Shaw. It's like, where would we be without the cytokine data? And what MD at NIH in physical medicine and rehab, who in his right mind invites a chiropractor from Oregon to do a grand rounds presentation in building 10 at NIH after she's been in practice four or five years. Because Who you're amazing. That? I think he's amazing. I had this thing. And so he did that. So Jay's coming. Oshman is coming. Pollock's coming. Rob DiMartino, Jen Sosnowski. But in the three hour block that we do in the morning from nine to 12, Bill Clearfield is doing Friday, I think. And is it okay with you? You promised you we wouldn't do two tracks in the afternoon, but could you do the three hour block in the morning on Thursday? Wherever you need me, I will be. And I, we put on a quarter and you can do three hours and have everybody totally entertained. So we'll do physical medicine one day and the endocrinology traumatic brain injuries in the morning. And I will try and figure out how to do the advanced in three hours, six hours. And then the afternoon, everybody that's listening, this is, I have to, we'll email out a call for case reports. Oh, and we've got Burke and Catholi, and we haven't decided whether we're going to give them an hour apiece, have them do case reports, or have them do the Ben and Dave show and do an hour that they share. I haven't figured out how to use them, but they're both coming. So I can't wait. It's, and we're all there together. I'm what so an excited. important oh, tribe oh, oh, we have. Wait, wait, one more. Wait, sorry. Kevin found the 2011 audio. It's only audio, but it's the time I made George pick up a microphone, sit on a stool, and that's a good face, and talk for an hour about how he met Harry, where the frequencies came from, how he came to build the precision micro, how he's not a digital guy and we, we couldn't build the precision micro, we went to the precision care. We have an hour with Dr. George. Wow. How are we going to do that? How are we going to listen to that? We're going to do it. We're going to put his picture up on the screen and I guess we'll put Kleenex at the end of the aisles and listen to George talk. And it's George from 2011. What and then a I'll bring special, the, special thing. Wow. And then I'll bring the frame piece that you and Ben and Dave made. That's all framed. 
And we have the new president of Precision Distributing. He has been our banker for 15, 18 years, since 2008. And he gets it. He met the team. He came here today. I've known him for 20 years. He knows George. He gets our vision. And he'll take care of the business part of it, which is the next step. So that's an hour with Dr. George. It's that's and then the Ruth Johnston Award. I'm really sorry, you guys, and you're welcome. Yeah. The advanced every year is beyond a scholastic edu- continuing educational course. You can't explain it what happens, the friendships you make, the relationships that develop. Yes, it is an amazing opportunity for continuing education in all the things that we do, but it's the conversations that happen in the hallway, at lunchtime, at the breakout sessions, over cocktails, over coffee. And when you were gone, when I was filling in guests, like it was not hard for me to pick out my five besties that I made at the advanced speak. And I have such close relationships with Ben and Dave and Jen and Rob and it's JJ and oh, Candace Elliott is going to do Tai Chi at lunch. Yeah. And then t- it's like the uh, super, t- all of the, it's the FSM family and community. And it's when they share their ideas and that, that brings up your theme, vulnerability. The thing I love about the FSM community is authentic authenticity. Nobody's proven it to anybody. We're all amazed at what the frequencies do. And the goals that we set are to change the world one patient and one practitioner at a time. And that leads you to being not only vulnerable, but humble. How could anybody, I promise not to do the, what I didn't tell you thing because there's only so much Kleenex but how do you how could you possibly get arrogant when you see that the frequencies do what they do and that the human body has such magic to be able to modify itself so quickly yeah it's that what you just said, we need to somehow like commemorate that sentence because, and I have not been teaching it a fraction as long as you have been, but there are practitioners that reach out and write emails with arrogance and I dismiss them because that is not what this is about. (laughs) You know, and, and I can tell now when I'm teaching who is going to do so well at this. Oh my God. And you can read it in their face. You can read it in their energy. You can just, you can see it. And I get excited for them all over again. I feel like that student in the front row, when we finally met face to face, and do you remember that? Like it was in Austin and you came in and we had a pretty small class and you were asking everybody's name. And we're, I was, I'm always the front row kid. I've always been like that. And I'm like, I'm Kim, I'm Kim Pittis. And you're like, Kim Pittis, because we had been emailing for years before we actually met face to face. And again, it was like, I don't know. So long story endless, the advanced is a special week, two weeks, however long it's going to be. And Core. sports to Thursday, Friday, advanced, Saturday, Sunday, symposium. and instructor oh, and instructors instructors on monday we're going to keep training people yeah and the- yeah and to the patients that are listening to this podcast and youtube channel sorry if this seems like a boring component but these these seminars that we have these annual conferences make your therapist that you end up seeing a exponentially better therapist, the learning that happens, the, and it changes every year. And you think, how could it possibly get better? How could it possibly change even more? But it does because we're vulnerable and we're open to change. And we're like, you know what, that wasn't working before. And we're trying something new and this is working better. So, well, what if you, 
we learn from each other is what Kevin just said. And totally. what if I do the 45 minutes on vestibular injuries? It's a snapshot. It's a teeny fleck. What if John Rusky hadn't done an hour with literature references? And what if we didn't have the BIVS 18? What if we didn't have that? It gives you paper and you get a score. And right. so when I make a referral to Dr. Rusky's office, because he happens to be near me, all I have to tell them is BIVSS is 45 out of 18. Okay, we have an opening in two weeks. It's just, and all gin and lime and mold. Lime and mold are big themes. Right. I don't teach, I don't treat. We need people that know not only what to do with FSM as an adjunct, but to take the deep dive. And I did find out that people have a 60 minute gluteal tolerance. Yeah. So the there's 60 minutes and both the, both, both the advanced and the symposium are case reports right. from practitioners because we learn from each other. Yes. We don't have it all figured out. Yeah. That's vulnerable. Yes. I'm going to read something that you wrote to me just before we close out the vulnerable theme, because last week on my birthday, I made a social media post about oh. that. I had about seeing my psychologist and I, my social media, I have a great person that helps me with it. So I have recipes and inspirational quotes and therapy things and strengthening things, but there's more to wellness than just that stuff. And I had one of those days where you're looking on Instagram and I got super angry because this one feed that I look at, this person's life is all perfect. And I'm like, it doesn't work like that. There's bad days. Everybody has them. There's bad years that you go through. And so I felt since it's my birthday, it's a good day to just do something out of the ordinary. And I can blame it on my birthday and blame it on a midlife or whatever I wanted to do. But, and I had such wonderful feedback, Kim, like that took such strength and way to put yourself out there. And that was relatable. And that was so authentic. And the social media world needs more of it. And, it, and I couldn't agree more. We need to check our egos. We need to be humble. We need to ask questions. We need to realize it's okay to not have it figured out. And hopefully you have a support network that can say, Hey, I can help. So you wrote something. And I want to just share it and I'll just paraphrase a little bit. Sometimes it's not about strong. It's about being, it's about being strong enough to allow yourself to be soft, injured, vulnerable, and knowing with certainty that strength will return. Certainty. Yeah. That hit me like in the gut, because I think that's what we give our patients is you're not expected to be strong right away, but it will come back. The flexibility will come back. The strength will come back. It, the injury will heal. So I just wanted to share that. So yeah. I know we have and questions coming in already, but. <laughs> it seems John. John. We'll do that one later. Okay. 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 So, yeah. So it's about taking your patient though, who is coming in this vulnerable state that maybe and sometimes they come and they've seen 20 practitioners before. And sometimes and I'm seeing a lot more of this demographic that hasn't gotten a lot of help, whether it's certain athletes, first responders, police, firemen, paramedics, they don't take care ER of docs. Docs. Yeah. ER docs. Yeah. Yeah. So I am seeing these first responders, these first liners has really grown in my practice in the last year, because again, it's like the athletes, it's like the secret society of, Hey, I'm seeing this person. She really helps with this. And some of it is like straight up MSK. There's a restriction, there's a tightness. And sometimes it's just, they need to purge the story of last week or how the injury happened. And Go ahead. No, just approaching that demographic, that, that patient group with, I got you. We'll figure this yeah. out. I got this with confidence. And the first responders, the other piece of it that's so important, and the thing I love about FSM and the last since 1995, when I took this inductive reasoning and everything is connected to everything, they're dopamine guys. So if you haven't watched 
Roger Billica's Molecules of Behavior, you have to watch that. And if you, the profession that they have, first responders, football players, hockey players, they're dopamine guys. They go and do. They don't care about detail. Do that later. They're usually acetylcholine, which is, I got to know stuff to do this. I have to just go in and do it. I'm running into a burning building and, or I'm, there's a guy shooting at me and I have to follow these procedures, but I have to go do this. That's dopamine, right? right? So you have those two neurotransmitters and then you look at the endocrine implications. They work X number of days a week. They when they're under stress, cortisol goes up. So all the stuff I teach about in fibromyalgia, corticotrophin releasing factor goes up. It sits on their central regulating hormones. So remember the fibromyalgia lecture, corticotrophin releasing factor goes up. It sits on thyroid hormone releasing hormone, and it increases increase thyroid hormone binding hormone right so there's a hormone that runs around it's a protein peptide something that binds testosterone before it can get to the place where it can be used right so the number one complaint that one of my i I have a patient that's an er doc he only works three night shifts a month but it takes him days to recover and he's exhausted all the time. I found out his cholesterol is 147 because they have him on two statins. So that's another conversation. But nobody has checked his testosterone binding globulin. And I explained CRF and it applies to your first responders. How do you do muscle recovery without testosterone? My testosterone is fine. Look at these pecs. Dude, let's do, let's test your testosterone and your testosterone binding globulin and growth hormone releasing hormone. It's the whole person. It's not just the injury. That's put that on another laminate right there. We do have to treat. And I think functional medicine obviously is paving the way for that mindset of treating the whole and not this like little bell curve that everybody should be falling into. And, but And that's what can make FSM frustrating at times is because we have all these frequencies and we're trying to treat the whole person. And like you were saying with Rob's topic, like where to start. And I think I'd actually had named a talk that I gave at the advance, like the highway to recovery with every speed bump in between or something like that, because there are, there is there's speed bumps and then there's left turns. And sometimes you're on the freaking roundabout for two, for two days, because you can't figure out where to exit. Yeah. Where do you start when it comes to somebody like that? Again, I think we have to go back to that. We have to support, give them the good and support all of those systems as you're looking at the shoulder pain, because it's not just the shoulder pain. You treat the alley because that's what they came in for you. Oh, yes. Right. So you yes. treat the hour and then I have homework. So I, I had pads made that are lined that are duplicates and ask your MD to check thus and, and you make them a to-do list. Do I get right. to be this picture here someplace sometime? You're on it. You just oh, okay. Can't, on I can't see, copy, it. You don't see it. So then you give them a to-do list. Check this. What? That's the stable state. All those stable state slides, I guess I have to adjust those. And by the way, just remind people right. to check that. And that, I love the vulnerability concept. This is sweet. Yeah, it's, I had a day like that Saturday. You saw mine on Facebook too. Yeah. Yeah. And I needed that too. So it's funny how we go through things and Yes, social media can be very, can be very toxic. 
but it can also be a great sense of support to people, especially stuff like you and I, where we're not posting toxic stuff. We, I think most of our posts are to spread love and to try to share things and to do good. So yeah, that's that. I want to, I want to take a little spin with the whole letting your guard down and how 4089 can be so helpful. We talk about 4089 in my world, it's afraid to move it. And it would come into my spectrum kind of after I would release muscle tissue and we were building that phase to get them to move. But I want to put a note that it can be very helpful for people who are even afraid to get treatment to even start this process. You don't have to wait till you've treated the scarring or treated the sticky part or the nerve pain before you move 1489 can be used anywhere. So like when you have the people that are on the table on there, you can't really see my traps, but their traps are jacked up and their arms are in, and they don't even want to show you the range of motion because they're afraid to move it even initially. So 1489 can be very helpful, even when you're doing your assessment. And this patient that I had, yes, 40 and 10 to take care of the body pain. Yes. But she's been in pain for 20 years and you can't tell by looking at her. Mm. And 40 and 10, quiet, this cord sensitization, central sensitization, the midbrain gets sensitized to pain. That was one patient. There's another patient that had MS who came in. He's quite advanced. His stress started in utero and his MS started in his twenties and that was 30 years ago, 40 and 89 ran on him for an hour. Interstitial cystitis, central sensitization. The lady described this stressful event that happened in 2014 as if it happened yesterday. That's central sensitization. That's 40 and 89 phantom limb pain. The lady with a six inch screw through three nerve roots from her pelvic fracture. Right. That gave her burning foot and leg pain. You're on 40 and 89, and it's still lasting. Wow. It's phantom limb pain. Yeah. So it's all of that. It's emotional sensitization. It's afraid to move it. It's central sensitization of pain. And it's emotions don't come from space they come from a place and that place is 89 that's the midbrain yeah yeah. so you quiet down that and run 970 and 33 and this very nice patient who's just the sweetest thing is so angry about so many things she said, would you run the frequency for anger, please? Oh, yeah. So we ran 970 and 35, and she just melted into the table. Res- take the pressure off of anger. Right. Take the pressure off of resentment, because those two go together. Right. Charity had 40 and 89 running, and then we spent another 20 minutes on restoring joy. It's just, it's, don't you just love it? I love it. And 10, 15 years ago, I would have never thought I would be at the place where I am open to these emotional frequencies or any of that. I just wanted scar tissue. I just wanted inflammation. I just wanted to get hockey players on the ice and hockey players winning gold medals. That was it. And then you just see with mileage and humility and vulnerability, there's a little bit more to learn about everything. And I think the more open you are to these concepts, the more the universe gives you these patients to reinforce, yes, you are doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Exactly. And that really doesn't matter what you're doing. So if you're a functional medicine internist listening to this podcast, it's everything is connected to everything. Yeah. Patient has SIBO. Yeah. Where did it come from? came because the vagus is turned off. What right. turned the vagus off? Ah, let's talk about lime and mold and let's work on the SIBO and let's work on the vagus. Yeah. And everything's connected to everything. Yes. 
Let's get to a couple questions before we go further down my list. Okay. Um, okay. Where do we start here? Q and A or chat? Let's go to this one on the chat first. Converter. Does it work the same way with two channels? So one ring has one frequency and the other has a second frequency. Do you still have the polarity control polarized positive? Both channels are in both pucks. And so they both fire at one time, takes the frequency specific electrical pulses, turns them into frequency specific magnetic pulses, and they don't polarize. They it's alternating, but you know that in patients that have stenosis, you can run 40 and 10, quiet the cord or quiet the nerve with the alternating polarity. Doesn't work as fast, but it still works. So at night, if I wake up with nerve pain in my hand that wakes me up. I'll put a puck at my neck, a puck in my hand, run 40 and 396 and go back to sleep. And the pains, the numbness and pain are gone when I wake up. So I guess it takes a certain amount of vulnerability to talk about the things that are wrong with me. Maybe that's, yeah, I had that. Yep. Yeah, again, but that's what makes you authentic sure. and relatable. Yeah. You're not standing up there saying you've never had pain before. It's yeah. I, it, it makes the patient feel more normal when you tell them you wake up in the morning with your hands numb. You yes. do. And you yeah. get all that other stuff done. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there are, there's medication, there's ketoprofen and lidocaine and I run 40 and 396 if I have to. And it's, it, all things work together for the good, but I'm okay with that. John Miser. I'm so excited. My experience exactly this week. Love the start. Yay, John. Being vulnerable was my story too this week. Dad of the frequencies pairs to reduce pain and a broken arm. 12-year-old oh, from six, only reduced to a five. Later learned more history that he had pins in his arm. Hence why we stop with it. start with a more complete history. Ah, oh, we have metal toxin frequencies and they could create more pain learned after the appointment. So after beating myself up a bit, I then celebrated that I got this in five hours later. So love the journey and learning. See you in February. Oh, goody. I love John Miser's hugs. Yay. And we heard from Derek about Hawaii. Hawaii. Yay. Yes. Okay. I'm so excited. Oh, um, a yeah. in the QA in it. Let's go to that question about detoxing when using FSM. I came to FSM through Dr. Klinghart, who likened it to neural therapy for practitioners who are not licensed to use needles. It is so much more than that now, I know, but in neural therapy, you increase the energy of the cells so the cells can begin to detox and take in water and nutrients. If FSM does similar, it makes you get a sense of makes sense, you get a detox reaction. In all patients, I have treated with concussion in Vegas. I see then getting detox symptoms as part of the treatment. I don't hear an FSM hmm. training. Many people speak about what to do with the detox reaction. Is this something that you recognize? Is there a frequency to counter the detox? And maybe I've just missed that. Would love your thoughts on the whole detox component. Thank you. Love your podcasts. Oh, yay. Thank you, anonymous attendee. We do talk about detox. The detox that I, ex that I see the most is when we're doing a lot of myofascial work. And so we used to tell people, and then I, the thing is, I don't see much in the way of detox reactions anymore. I just don't. And I never thought about concussion in Vegas causing detox reactions. That's intriguing. If somebody gets sick or feels ill after you run concussion, it suggests that you haven't done a vestibular screen and you maybe didn't get the connection between the vestibular section and the concussion section. So I probably should add a slide that specifically says if the concussion protocol makes somebody sick, you go back and do a vestibular screen. That's, it's not a detox reaction. If you run concussion in Vegas and somebody feels crummy, it's 94, 94. It's 94, 94 and you will make, there is a download of BIV 18. Just have them fill it out. It makes it high life. I have to just add to this though, as somebody who did a lot of myofascial work before FSM came into my life, I had way more patients that had these detox flu-like symptoms after a two hour deep tissue treatment, as opposed to FSM. And even though we are doing stuff 
that I would normally would take somebody two, three hours and we can do it in 20 minutes. I also don't have people having these like detox reactions. They feel floaty. They feel happy when they leave. I don't know if that's a detox reaction. It's a good detox reaction, but I very rarely since I've been practicing with this, have anybody call me or text me or email and say, I've been, I feel terrible. Only actually one person and they were running liver detox protocols over the weekend with their custom care and they expected it. And they actually liked the fact that they felt yucky, but that was the only time. That makes sense. Good, sir. Leaf um, said something. Where's Leaf's question? Or was it Le or Leaf's Sorry comment? for trying to, hi oh. Leaf. We're on, on Maui for the next two weeks. Shut up. Lucky you. We'll try to join up as possible. Wi-Fi is not too speedy. Reading Energetic Diagnosis. It's a wonderful book. And it takes a lot of courage for an MD to write a book like that's yeah. number one. So when we have Neil, he has three books out. And one of the things that I ask of him is to bring his books and we'll have a book signing with him, whatever. There you go. I have mine at the office. Part relates to Kim's experience of releasing patients' sudden statements of abuse. Yeah. But from a different technique, but with the same experience of release and recovery. There's there are there's a phrase that was used when I was in my psych training, and that is it's not new, it's old. It's trauma is never buried dead, it's buried alive. Trauma is buried alive. So when you talk about it it's not buried anymore. So it doesn't have the unconscious power. So there is a, there's a power in dealing with the discomfort you feel, pain you feel, the um, vulnerability you feel, the sadness you feel, whatever, as, and you don't have to lay it on somebody else. You don't have to share it with somebody. You mm -hmm. have to share it with yourself. There's this, there are days when there's this hole in my heart. When I come home and my son isn't sitting on the couch. So my solution on Saturday was to buy Narcan and keep buying it until everybody I know has a dose in their purse. Two doses, actually. And the other solution is I'm buying a new couch. But yeah. the first conversation is with yourself to admit it to yourself. And that gives you power over it. Again, that, that goes back to what you had texted me about the strength comes back. And when you admit it, I'm feeling this, I need some help with that. This is not working for me. It's not as scary anymore. And I think we have to recognize that as practitioners too, for patients that come in through our door and say it out loud. I don't sleep. I am depressed. This is ruining my marriage. When you say something out loud to somebody that you trust, there's strength in that. There's empowerment in that. There's hope that something will change. And what you had just said, you are upset about these things. This is a sadness. This is a very real situation, but there's change coming. There's strength in that. There's power in that. Yeah. And there's the interchange with patients. It's a relationship and you have tools and you have training. It's why we have faculty. It's why we use FSM, like literally, I haven't seen a patient all week that I've had, I usually have between three and five machines on any given patient. How do you treat a fibromyalgia head injury patient without doing concussion in Vegas minus 94? How, right. how do you do that? It's pretty cool. I really yeah. love doing us. 
I know. Leaf, okay. Leaf says, I love that about trauma being buried alive. No wonder it keeps rearing its ugly head. Yes, Leaf, exactly. <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of George's books, like going back to the 60s, 70s, 80s. I need to talk to you and the other folks up there. Remind me, there's boxes of books, George books. Okay. All right. Detox reaction in those frequencies is still mold. Mm. High infection load. Yeah. And what I suggest when you know that a patient has mold or other kinds of infection that you put in that takes minutes to remodel your vagus, the vagus portion of concussion in vagus. And you just add the mold frequencies. Right. You add, I have one patient, you had this flare up starting in July. What happened in June? Nothing. I had COVID. Okay. So in her concussion in Vegas, I put the four virus frequencies in the midbrain and the Vegas. So somebody has mold, you put the mold frequencies in the midbrain, the medulla, and the vagus. Deep tissue work sends a mold line patient into a tailspin. Well, that never mind. Mold the midbrain. You started Dr. Catholi on the energetic diet. Oh. What was that? Ben and Dave, I have no idea. Oh, energy protection lection at the Chicago course. That was pretty fun. Oh. Do you tell? Oh, yeah. There are. Okay. You ready? Yeah. You want to play? Do we have yeah. time? We've got seven yeah. minutes. We have lots. Okay. Of time. I did this in Germany. And you ready? So I want you yep. to take, take your hands and clap them together and rub them till they get hot. Do it. Everybody. Ready? They're hot right now. Pull them apart, close your eyes. Now bring them together until you feel pressure and warmth. There you go. That's your field. This is how shamans work. Remember Karate Kid, where Mr. Miyagi goes and does that? You can feel that. And then the next step, now that you know what this feels like, this is energy. Then you take your hand and you bring it up against your arm until, go ahead and do it, until you feel that same sort of warmth and pressure. You can feel it with your hand. Then you can teach your arm to feel it if you bring it in. Push harder and you can feel the pressure on your arm increase. Okay, now take a breath in through the top of your head. And I want you to push your hand out by increasing the pressure from the inside out. Bring it out. Make your field stronger until you can push your hand out by about, let's start with an inch. For me, I bring my breath in from the sun or Alpha Centauri, but you pick whatever your source of energy is. And there it goes. Feel it? You did that. And then we had a conversation about the field that I put up around every room where we have a seminar. I don't tell people about it. And in 27 years of doing this, there's only been two people that actually went to walk in the room and they could see it. We get into a state where we are vulnerable and sensitive. And it's my job, as far as I'm concerned, is to protect you. So I don't actually remember the energy protection lesson, but I think that's what I did. And then the task is 
for you as practitioners, since we see people that are so depleted and looking to us for energy, support, healing, all those things that we bring to them, you got to keep it for yourself. Right. And that's where you're talking about humility. And I guess humility is the thing. I don't do anything. I actually don't do anything. I don't do anything. Right? I think. I let the frequencies do the work. I steal liberally from Neil Nathan, Roger Billica, Rob Martino, right? All of the people that have taught us over the years. Jeff Bland. But the healing happens because of that. Right. And you, for the practitioners that are listening, it's important that you are the only one that's in your field and that this edge that you feel is here. Three to 10 inches, 10 inches is too thin, but three to five inches from your body. And you're the only one that's in it. You and the sun and wherever your source, whatever you think your source is, what it's not what you think. And it's not emotional. It's where your source is. Who is your source? What is your source? That and you are what's inside this bubble. And I think that's what you mean by energetic protection lesson, because actually Chicago was two weekend. Was it one or two weeks ends ago? Was that last weekend? No, nope, it was two weeks ago. It was two, two weeks ago. So a lifetime. Ago. Okay, good track. Sorry. No, it's good. We, that-, that was amazing. Yeah. Is that um, fun? Yes. Was there one more comment on the Q&A or did we go through it? It says the one that's open on the Q&A. Did you? I was switching back on. Oh, in neural therapy, cells that have been turned off. I'm not educated in neural therapy. Become turned back on. I don't see how xylocaine does that, but that's another conversation. The cell switch polarity. I'd love to see the research on that. That's another conversation. Cells may be able to detox for the first time in a real long time. I have taken chlorella for the first few sessions. It's a good absorbent, adsorbent, no sickness, fuzzy, weary, hard to describe. I have him turn cells back on, switching their polarity. No, nope. Therefore, no, I think- we get the detox. I, that's a rabbit hole. And then I'm just that I'm just like, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it is hard. To, there's only so much that an ADD person can do. Congratulations, you did a great job. And the I, I have I mean, a challenge. You you go because I have a challenge with the phrase detox. So do I. I'm just I'm getting hung up on there. I just think that if you have a chance, anonymous attendee, to listen to our favorite doctor from Australia who I can't wait to see next year. I'm so excited. FSM Sports is going to Australia. But Diana Cross does a phenomenal job about talking about cell signaling. And to me, that makes sense what we're doing as opposed to changing polarity and the detox stuff. But I don't know. I don't know much about that. And I typically tend to think about it through Dr. Cross's model of cell signaling. That's fine. And yeah, it is definitely cell signaling and cells don't change polarity. You fall over dead. You are polarized positive at the top, bottom, negative at the bottom, positive centrally, negative distally, and cells don't change polarity. I'm not sure the model that they use in neural therapy, but what they're doing is injecting xylocaine around scar tissue, especially scar tissue that runs across acupuncture meridians. One of George's special things was he did, he used the probes to stimulate acupuncture point. And that is as close as we ever came to neural therapy, I think. Oh. That's as close as we're gonna get with that because it's 402. So, you really, what, a, what a day. 
I was, this has been an hour. That's amazing. Thank you so much. No, thank good. you so much. This is, this was a very, very good one. Yep. Yes, it was. Yep. Okay. Going back to the business part, sign up for the advance before you can't anymore and get your early bird specials, FSM sports for the sports side. You can still sign up. The early bird pricing is gone, but I think there are three spots left for the sports advanced. And there's still, I think half the spots for the sports course. So the, if you're a practitioner listening, you don't want to miss the February meetings in Arizona. You don't want to do that. Yeah. Got it. Especially this year. It's Especially this time. year. Spend the time so you can talk to all the people and listen to all the things. Yeah. And we have in my schedule, it's called the Genius Collective. Mm. The speakers are going to be in a panel. Neil, can you imagine? Not my brain. Neil, might I did. Yeah. It's going to be so much fun. I'm excited. Okay. Bye, everybody. We will see you in a week. <gasps> oh, look, there's somebody here from Israel. I saw that. That's exciting. So exciting. Welcome. See you next week. <laughs> see you next week. Bye. The Frequency Specific Microcurrent Podcast has been produced by Frequency Specific Seminars for entertainment, educational, and information purposes only. The information and opinion provided in the podcast are not medical advice, do not create any type of doctor-patient relationship, and unless expressly stated, do not reflect the opinions of its affiliates, subsidiaries, or sponsors, or the hosts, or any of the podcast guests or affiliated professional organizations. No person should act or refrain from acting on the basis of the content provided in any podcast without first seeking appropriate medical advice and counseling. No information provided in any podcast should be used as a substitute for personalized medical advice and counseling. FSS expressly disclaims any and all liability relating to any actions taken or not taken based on or any contents of this podcast.